It's been a while, but now they're back. Board Game Reviews, and this time we've got Thief's Market. Uh, this was sent to me by Tasty Minstrel Games, and it was designed by Dave Chalker. Look at that guy. He's, he's ready to steal all the stuff. You are all thieves! Each round you will split the loot from the day's heist, and then use your share of the loot to buy useful items, accrue finery, and employ henchmen. Once the last deck has run out of cards, the player who has gained the most notoriety points will be the next King of Thieves. Alright, let me show you how to play. So in Thieves Market, your goal is to get the most notoriety points at the end of the game. Uh, each round is played in two phases. In the first phase, the dice will be rolled, and the players will take turns either claiming dice, and possibly the start player marker, uh, from the center to form a pile of objects in front of them, or stealing a previously claimed pile from another player. When a pile is stolen from another player, at least one object must be returned to the center from the pile, and dice returned to the center are re-rolled. Once everyone has a pile, you go into the second phase where you can trade in dice and gold to buy cards from the market. At the end of the round, the market is refilled. So as you can see on the dice, there are different kinds of gems. There's red, blue, you know, these are all different sort of currencies uh, you can use to purchase cards. The gold sides are uh, turned in for gold tokens at the end of the round, um, and purple masks are infamy tokens, which are worth one notoriety point each at the end of the game. So let's say I'm the first player and I roll the dice. Ta-da! Now all the dice and the start player marker are put in the center. Now looking at the dice that I've rolled, I can decide to keep as many of the dice and potentially the start place marker uh, as I want. So let's say I go, I'm gonna take, I don't know, green, red, blue, gold. Uh, and let's take a white. Let's say I'm gonna take these. I would take these dice and put them in front of me as a pile. Now the second player goes, hmm, do I want to take stuff from the center? Or does this player's pile look good and I want to steal from it? So you have two options. If the second player wanted, they could take, let's say, these four and they're done. They just put them in front of themselves and they have another pile. But let's say they want to steal from player one. What they would do is look at what player one has, but they have to return one of these to the uh, center. So let's say they return the gold. They re-roll it, oh, it's a gold again, and they put it back in the center, and they successfully take player one's pile. So when stealing, the stealing player must return at least one object uh, to the center. They can return more than one, as long as they keep at least one object from the pile. And so if you have only one object in front of you, you can't be stolen from. Okay, so player two stole some dice, moves on to, let's say, player three. Player three can choose to take some from the middle, or steal player two's pile. Uh, let's say they take these, and if there were three players, player one could choose to take everything in the middle or steal somebody else's uh, pile. It's really up to them. But let's say player one takes everything. And now you have your three piles. You continue until everyone has a pile in front of them. Now it's time to make purchases. Starting with whoever has the start player marker, everyone uh, can choose to purchase a single card in turn. The cost is listed on the card. This one is, is uh, one green gem cost, this one is one red gem, this one is one blue gem. If you happen to have any gold tokens, those can be used as wilds and can be used in place of any colored gem. Now you can only buy one card per round unless you have a special card that says otherwise. When everyone has had a chance to purchase cards, the round ends. At the end of the round, any yellow dice you have get turned in for gold tokens, and any purple dice you have get turned in for infamy tokens. You refill the market with cards from the deck, and then as the game progresses, uh, you'll move on to B deck and C deck, and then eventually the game will be over um, once you can't replace any more cards. So the actual playing of the game is very simple, but the meat of the game is in these cards. So as you can see, they all have different abilities. Um, nearby safe house, at the end of the game, if you have one card with this icon, um, next to the card name, this card is worth one notoriety point, and if you have two or more of that symbol, um, this card is worth two notoriety points. So as you can see, all the cards have symbols um, in the top left corner that correspond to different meanings. Public relations expert, uh, once per round you may spend one green gem dice from your pile to gain one infamy token, get some nice points that way. Disgruntled minion, during any round in which your final pile at the end of the splitting the loot phase contained one or more red gem dice, you may purchase an additional card when it is your turn to purchase. So you can actually buy an extra card uh, with this, with normal cost, but still that's a pretty good good ability. Those are just a few examples of some of the cards you get, but there's some really interesting things you can do within the game. I don't want to like necessarily spoil it, but it's all about sort of um, getting notoriety points and uh, finding ways to get more benefits from specific colors of dice. 
There will be cards where you can turn your blue dice into a different color. There will be cards that you can uh, just get straight up notoriety points. There's a lot of different ways you can go about the game uh, in terms of getting points, which I like about it. At the end of the game, you count up all your notoriety points. Whoever has the most henchman icons uh, gets three notoriety points. Whoever has the most gold tokens at the end gets three notoriety points as well. Uh, you add up all your points, and whoever is the most notorious is the winner. And that's how you play. There are a lot of fun mechanics going on here. I really like the game. Uh, the concept of sort of splitting the loot and potentially stealing from other players is fun. Uh, you find yourself kind of managing your risk of, uh, should I take this much because I need certain dice to buy certain cards? But at the same time, I don't want to make my pile too enticing because if it's too enticing, then someone's going to steal from it. So, because, you know, it, it kind of makes you go, I don't want to take too much from this, but I want to take just enough so that I get what I need without getting stolen from. The cards themselves are a lot of fun powers. I mentioned some before, but there's like, you know, you can generate infamy points. You can make certain dice colors more efficient. Um, there's a lot of really interesting ways that the cards can power you up and combo off each other and make and give you a lot of rewards and stuff. Now, one complaint, and I always complain about this. So people probably get tired of hearing me complain about this, but just I don't like having symbols on the cards. Just write text, especially if you have to have a glossary of every single card description. Uh, as well as this sort of menu of all the symbols, it, it just feels like you could just write the text on it and it'd be fine. Now, some of the cards are, you know, they're pretty straightforward. Like, sure, this blue dice becomes one of those. But if you look at something like this for the first time, that's like, what? What does that mean? Yeah, you learn the symbols as you go on. And yeah, you can say that for any game that uses symbols. Sure, I'm, I'm not saying that it breaks the game by any means. It's still a very fun game. But it just... As you're playing and you have to like look up every symbol and look up all the things, it's just like, couldn't this just have text? If this just had text, we wouldn't even have to do this and it'd be so much simpler. That's just me though. The beginning cards are pretty simple, but there are some later cards where there is just crazy symbology going on and you're like, I don't, even if I, even as if I've been playing this for a while, I don't know what this means just by the symbols. I gotta look it up and figure it out. It's like a little, little code. Come on, just put text on the damn cards. I'm not saying this just to this game. I'm saying this to all games that do this. But overall, though, the game is fun. I enjoy it. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with the dice that is really tricky and interesting. Um, a lot of different types of strategies. You could go for all infamy points, or you could go, like, really making your dice dope, or, I don't know, there's all sorts of combos you can do. And I really like that. I like when a game uh, presents you with many different avenues towards victory, and none of them are, necess are like, necessarily better than the others. It makes the game more interesting. Um, so overall, good game. I would recommend it. Go steal from your friends and make them mad.